My name is Richard Beatty, I'm the CEO of Fitness New Zealand, the industry association for the fitness industry in New Zealand. In February 2011, Christchurch, which was also where we're based, uh, had a major earthquake hit the city which devastated not only the fitness industry but the entire central city business district. Uh, since then there's actually been over 10,000 aftershocks and as a result the fitness industry has been significantly affected. The majority of the clubs in Christchurch, given the size of the city, which is approximately 350,000, were in the central city and as a result the central city was hit the hardest and probably around three quarters of the clubs in Christchurch closed overnight uh, in, in February. Even now, over a year on, over half of those are still not reopened and the largest clubs in the city are still not open. The, in the immediate response, a lot of the clubs were trying to ascertain how quickly they could open and it was very difficult not only in terms of insurance but in terms of a lot of the council regulations and, and a new organisation set up specifically in response to the earthquake which was managing uh, access to the central city and they pretty much closed the city off so it made it really difficult for club owners to even access their building to, to determine how they would reopen. So we've got the biggest club in the city is about to reopen hopefully in a couple of days time and that'll be the first club that's actually reopened in the central city since February. Our immediate response was to deal with two issues, one of which was the clubs but more urgently was actually the exercise professionals because we understand that most clubs would have insurance of some sort and were also working, particularly the, the managers and the owners, on trying to reopen. The exercise professionals on the other hand, many of them were contractors to facilities and therefore weren't being paid anything while the clubs were closed and their livelihood was at stake. We were very concerned that a number of them would leave the industry if we didn't act quickly. So we got them together within 10 days of the, of the major earthquake and looked at what sort of initiatives we could put together. We asked them what did you want from us and a number of them suggested that we instigate programs that were not facility based because so many facilities were closed. So we did a thing called PT in the Park and it was no idea of the trainers. So it was personal training for free for the public of Christchurch in most of the major parks around the city. And the PTs initiated it, the PTs provided the services. What it enabled them to do was to keep busy but more importantly provide a mechanism for them to work together and I guess collaborate on an initiative that otherwise potentially could have left them without a job. We were really acting as a facilitator there. We, our offices ourselves were actually in the east of the city and the east of the city was hit the hardest. Um, but we, within an, about two weeks, managed to reopen our offices, albeit without water or power. Um, and again, you learn an awful lot about what you need and what you don't need when you don't have the internet, you don't have the phone, and you don't have a working toilet. What we do have is the ability to text message every personal trainer in the city. And again, having a registration body really helped us with that because we actually had the ability to directly communicate with the trainers when remembering there was a lot of, there was no power or no water to most of the city. So the ability to communicate was really hindered. And so what we did was get them together and said, what do you want us to do? We had a number of ideas, but more importantly, we wanted the trainers to come up with their initiatives that we could support. A number of the clubs directly tried to raise funds. So for example, Les Mills got Richard Simmons, who happened to be in New Zealand filming for something else, uh, to, to raise funds to support their trainers, which is fantastic. Uh, what we tried to do was support initiatives that were for all trainers in Christchurch. And the other thing that we did was try to find trainers' homes, because there were still a number of facilities, albeit the smaller ones, that were open. And we had, for, an example of that was a women's facilities that was, was for women only during the week, but it was only open Monday to sun, uh, Saturday. And so the owner said we're happy that men would come in on Sundays and so that they would allow trainers to come into the facility on Sunday and train male clients and that was just an example of how I guess the, the community was working together and, and she wasn't even charging for it so it wasn't a business thing it was actually about saying we understand trainers don't have homes and I've got a gym here that's not being used on a Sunday and, and a number of trainers did that everything from little studios that used to have one trainer now have four um, gyms that had two or three trainers now had ten but again, they would work together collaboratively, quite often for, for no payment or very little payment. And it was all about trying to keep the trainers in business with their clients. Because the trainers with clients actually found that most of the people, as long as they were in Christchurch, wanted to continue to exercise. It was the, 
the clubs that were struggling with their members that they didn't have a facility to open. The trainers with clients could, as long as they had somewhere to train them, could continue with their business. There's, we are still fundraising now. We've got a number of initiatives and things like PT in the Park is completely free to the public and the trainers are not paid at all. And so what we're doing, Fitness New Zealand, is contributing things like signage to the park, um, working with the council about getting permits for the park and, and such like. And so, and unfortunately that does cost money, but we realise the trainers are giving away their time, so the least we can do is support them with some signs and such like. And that does unfortunately cost a fair bit of money. So any um, fundraising activities and we can give people brochures and, and support mechanisms to enable to, to promote that to their members. A number of people just did things like put extra classes on and do a gold coin donation. But that's really helped. Um, and we've, we raised a number of funds right around the world within, within a month. Um, we were very, very surprised with the number of people that, that did contribute, but we're, we're still doing that right now because there are still over three quarters of the trainers in Christchurch are displaced. In other words, they don't have their normal base of operation to work from.